All right, so so to continue on where we left off, after blocking, the athlete will continue around in the path um, shown by the arrows and perform the same thing um, four times. So each subsequent trial is recorded and the decrement is calculated. Um, and this is measuring how quickly the athlete becomes fatigued or how, um, how they resist fatigue. The limitation of this is that elite athletes often have very high scores in the first place, so that first trial that's considered ideal is very, very high. So while they may seem like um, they're fatiguing quite a bit if their second or third trial um, has a high decrement, the overall score for the second or third trials may still be well um, beyond uh, average um, for elite players. Over here we have a diagram for the 15-30-15 agility test. So the athlete's going to start right here on the green um, star. They're going to, this could be performed either direction to begin. I should note that. Um, but they're going to run to one side, pivot, go all the way to the other end, and then return back into the middle, and that will be timed. Nord Nord normative data shows about a little over five seconds for um, female collegiate recruits and this data could be used to compare um, preseason trials to either midseason or even postseason. Now over here we see um, many of you have probably already seen these before but the agility balls I have not found any data on this this is something that I've seen before um, because when you throw it or bounce it, um, using for trading, it kind of flies wherever it wants to at the time, and it's unpredictable. And that can be used um, to train for agility just because it's not um, a predicted path that you'll have to try to fault to retrieve the ball. All right, so to wrap, to wrap up, um, how will we know, or how will we try to make the, the test most reliable? Well, we'll use the same facility, um, and the same technician if possible. Try to keep the same motivation levels as the technician um, to motivate the athletes. Um, we can look at the data. Is it correlating to performance? If not, if it seems um, a little off, then maybe try something different. Try either a different test for that, um, for that same factor of performance. Um, or even just skipping it. We'll make sure we have multiple trials to see if our numbers are similar um, and perform the test at the same time of day. Some of the, um, the strengths of some of the tests, the jumps and power cleans, the speed work tests, and the RET, they're more likely to correlate to performance since they, mi they mimic what goes on on the court. Some of the weaknesses um, include sometimes I noticed that in the some of the data comparing uh, national volleyball team members um, compared to the either the second string or the junior athletes. Sometimes the junior athletes will have higher um, scoring in either the jump jump height or even agility, but overall their volleyball skills are subpar. Also, a lot of the assessments really cater to either middle blockers um, or outside or um, opposite side hitters. I did not see um, too many studies that actually looked at setters or defensive specialists, and there's usually um, one per team of each of those, so maybe that's why there's less data on them. Right here are a list of my uh, sources, and I did notice that my, some the sound for the YouTube videos would not play when I'm recording. So if you'd like to take a look at those, they're listed down here at the bottom. And if you have any questions, I will see those in the discussion board. Okay, thank you.